What is up, YouTube? So today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're not going to be talking about specific atomizers. We're not going to be talking about anything else other than how to intelligibly install coils that is ultimately going to be run on NLPWM, PWM, PWM1, insert whatever PWM acronym you want here. Um, it's how I do it. It's how I was, I've always done it. And uh, when we're going to discuss the reasoning why we do what we do. So uh, we're going to wrap up some coils and we're going to get them installed and we are going to discuss. Okay, now we're back. We're going to take care of this. Okay, so we've got our trusty candidate here, the XL Trilogy. Again, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Follow the same process for everything. So, I'm going to go through and start off by snipping our legs. Okay, all right, I'm gonna drop the coils in. Uh, these are nine wrap dual core stags, 2636, all in 80, four and a half mil. Usually with like four and a half mil coils, I don't really worry about putting a mandrel in them because they don't really shape shift too much. Okay. to get them adjusted. Okay, coil position spot on. All right, now you see, run a DNA device. Run a DNA device because the DNA device <coughs> regulates your wattage and your voltage um, in a much different way than a PWM device does. A pulse width modulation device takes all of your pack's voltage and then dials it down to whatever you want your output to be. However, if your output is not specified, meaning your resistance jumps all over the place, 
and then your device doesn't know what to do and it bugs out. That ultimately usually uh, entails blown coils. So, or the struggle bus, big time struggle bus. So, got our DNA sitting at 35 watts, currently measuring 0.18 resistance on a build that I feel is going to clock in right around 0.37 to 0.39. Slowly introducing heat, nothing too crazy. Uh, the reason that you start out low is when your coils first see heat, it's going to help them set up. They're going to contract a little bit, they're going to firm up, um, and well, they're going to have a lot of hot spots. So if you're running the beans out of it at, I don't know, 200 watts on fresh coils, you're going to weld them. There's no if ands, or buts about it. You're going to weld them, and then, best of luck, getting them unstuck, and then balanced. Um, ceramic tweezers. Some people just use metal. Whatever that may be, tweezers, etc., etc. I like ceramics, so I can strum them while hitting the fire button. And, well, you don't have to worry about an arc. So, that's why we do what we do for, like, a couple bucks on Amazon. You'll notice when I'm strumming, right, I'm not the most gentle. Like, I'm not sitting there, like, scraping coils, but I'm... Tinging on them, pinging on them, however you want to word it. Reason being is I want all those hot spots to pop up. I want them to come out now. I want to get as many of them to surface as possible before going up in wattage. Okay, we're looking good. On to step two. Step two, we're going up. I'm going to jump from 35 up to 70. Just because 70 sounds good. Pile of hot spots come back out. As always, these bent legs always have a hot spot right on the first wrap. However, we're looking good. I'm gonna see if we can piss them off a little bit. Still looking good. Next up. You notice that didn't take very long at all. Reason being is we already got the coils set. Already got a bunch of hot spots out. So now it's just going through the process of upping that wattage, slapping on them a little bit, trying to get hot spots to come out. Short pulses. Short. Not cherry red, not white hot, just short pulses. At this point, we're up to 115 watts. We're still registering a 0.18, but I know that that build is likely pretty much balanced at this point. So I'm going to take a guess and say 0.38. Nah, okay, so we still got some work to do. 0.34. No, a big deal. I might have been ambitious. Actually, a 5 wrap, or a 5 millimeter would have been 0 0.37, 0 0.38. So these will probably settle right at 0.34. Uh, the gentleman I'm building for said he wants to cloud out the entire country of Australia. So, he won't be upset about that. We're up to 180 watts. Again, short pulses. Just checking. Uh, what can happen sometimes is your coils can get a little manipulated during the heating process. So, I'm usually eyeballing them to make sure they're right where I want them still. Which, obviously, they are. No issues at this point with our resistance where it's at. We are going to now jump over to NLPWM. Now that the, the resistance of the coils is pretty well accurate, they're balanced, we don't have any hot spots. We're going to jump to NLPWM now, or PWM, or whatever you have, and we're going to start over. Careful when doing this, don't touch coils. They're hot, okay? Unless you're like, like cool skin tag tattoos. 
that are not permanent, then, I mean, grab it. Go for it. Okay, so the first thing we're doing, turning our wattage way down. We're going to go almost to where we started. We're going to go all the way down to 50 watts. And check that resistance, 0 0.32, uh, 0 0.03 change from device to device is quite common, pretty nominal. Okay, we're starting to warm up. We're starting to see a little, little action going on. We're now up to 0.36. We're going to go up to 80 watts. No hot spots in our common areas. We're going to keep going up. 140 watts. Looking good. Keep going up. 200 watts. Still looks good. The reason that I do these checks is I can't tell you how frustrating it is to install your coils get them all broke into where you think they're satisfactory, then wick it up, then put it together, and then hit the fire button, and then all you hear is that buzzing noise, and get the most horrific burnt hit known to man. So, some people don't do this. They got their own process, it works for them. But, this is what I do, and 99% of the time, it is effective. We're up to 340 watts. Again, short pulses, not getting them cherry red, just looking for hot spots. At this point, I'm just going to rake them a little bit. Nothing happened. Oh, there we go. Small little hot spot on this outer leg. Notice all I did to fix that was literally grab the outer leg with tweezers and pushed it away. Just a little bit of space between those coils is all you need usually to get a hot spot out at this point. It's just a contact issue. Remove the contact, remove the issue. Our legs are good. Honestly, at 340 watts, there's no real reason to go any higher for me. Um, A little bit of water um but that's it that's my whole process so let's go up top real quick so coil install for pwm devices it's a little different than what most people are used to um and there's still people today that are brand new to pwms nl pwms pwm ones like i said you name it blah blah yada yada but if you want the most consistent technique for installing coils on a, a PWM device. That's the method I've used for almost five years now, probably at least four and a half, and it's never failed me. It only fails me when I fail to swap decks over onto NLPWM and don't do that process. So take it for what you will. Hopefully this is helpful to some people. Other people may just be questioning why they just wasted however many minutes of their life watching it. Who knows? But that's what's up. Peace out, guys.